Hey everybody, welcome to another GG.co.uk video with me, Daryl Carter. Um, we are looking ahead again to the ITV races on a Saturday. A quick early look with me, just to throw some thoughts out there. Uh, it helps me as well when I do the rest of the work later on. The GG column will be up at around 5.30 tonight. Um, so yeah, we're going to kick straight off into it. New market, bear in mind, we're expecting a, quite a bit of rain through Friday into Saturday with heavy downpours at around 3 o'clock, if the forecast is to be believed. Drier day over at Haydock tomorrow. But the 150 is the Royal Lodge Stakes, Group 2 Royal Lodge. The market is headed by Cobe, 5-2, Gear Up, 7-2, New Mandate, 7-2, Ontario 7-2 and Pleasant Man 7-1. Aidan O'Brien's won this the last two years, so anything he enters in here and he's just got the one entry, Ontario, has to be respected, um, despite me not thinking that a stiff mile on soft ground is probably going to suit him. Um, I think he needs to take a step forward, but he's not far off the top rated in this race. The top rated is actually New Mandate, who is one of the form horses in this race. Um, he actually beat um, the second and the fourth from the Acom stakes, that Gear Up won much easier than Gear Up did. I think he should be shorter in the market on that basis alone. And the fact that he's going to appreciate this step up to a mile, I think he might be the one to side with with Frankie Dottori. Cobe brings the strongest form line of them all into the race. Um, but... I'm not a massive fan of Adam Kirby at Newmarket. I think he can unbalance a horse a little bit going into that dip with his riding style. And I think the statistics would back that up for me. Uh, whether he wants a really strong mile on soft ground at Newmarket, a stiff mile, I'm not entirely sure. He is, um, he is a winner on soft ground over six furlongs. But he wasn't the strongest at the finish at Salisbury last time. So I'm willing to take him on. I think New Mandate might be the one to be with there. In the 225. Um, we have the Chiefly Park Stakes, uh, and the market is headed by Dan Dalla. Um, this horse is really, really a nice horse. There's not a lot not to like about Dan Dalla. She won last time over course and distance on soft ground, so any rain that comes shouldn't be too much of an issue. I do think we'll see the best of Dan Dalla on a sounder surface going forward, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And the fact that the form has worked out so well with Fev Rover going on to do excellent things, and the third going out to win next time out, suggests that... She is a proper, proper horse. Um, uh, look, I might take her on, I might not. I might not get involved in this race. Miss Amulet won the Lowther at York last time. It's very interesting. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the underfoot conditions, whether she's going to appreciate soft ground or not. She quickened up really smartly uh, and held off Sacred in the closing stages. I actually think Sacred might be able to reverse that form. She was caught too far back uh, when the race really developed that day. And she stayed on really strongly. I always thought that her future was lying over six furlongs. I don't know why on earth they dropped her back to five furlongs next time out at Doncaster. But they're back up to six this time. They've got the cheek pieces on first time. Could just eke out a little bit more improvement. And, and Sacred is a really, really tough horse. So I do like that horse, Sacred. Um, but really not a race to get too deeply involved in until you know the ground conditions because like i say not many of these two-year-olds on this basically what is a two-year-old day at newmarket have encountered soft ground before so it's always worth keeping in mind when you're having a big bet on a two-year-old race about the ground uh the three o'clock is the middle park stakes and i actually think the ground could be an issue for minzow uh i love this horse i put this horse up when he won very easily at York. Um, but this looks a top of the ground horse, real slow swing in action um, with his front legs, daisy cut in action, but definitely, definitely worthy of a rating of 112. The, the figures that Minzow has, has put up, at least on my clock, have been really, really impressive. Uh, and Jim Crowley likes the horse a lot, I do believe. Method is not really done it for me. He's not really excited me as much as he has everybody else. He does look a nice horse, but I'm not entirely sure about him going forward. I think he might want a mile already. That's the type of horse he looks to me. Uh, might find just some speedier horses in here. Minzow, like I say, probably the best horse in the race. But conditions may not suit here. Lucky Vegas is the one I'm probably going to take a chance on here for uh, Jessica Harrington. She's actually got a runner in the 315, which is also on ITV races. Uh, we'll cover that later in the day. Uh, it's got a two-year-old in that race, but Shane Foley comes over here to ride Lucky Vega. Um, was a little bit unlucky behind Thunder Moon at the Curra over seven furlongs when short of room last time. They dropped back to six furlongs today. That could be a positive 
Um, and Lucky Vega looks to be going very much the right way and is the top rated in the field of a mark of 117. And you can get four to one about Lucky Vega, who definitely will handle cutting the ground. Um, so that's where I'm at with that race at the moment. The, let's get straight on, actually, to the Cambridgeshire. The 335, the big race of the day. Um, I've been racking my brains about this race for about a week now. Um, I've had a couple of horses that have not gone into the race, unfortunately. But I've whittled it down to four. And here, here is my four. I'm going to reel off my four now. Um, whether or not these go up on the column or whether or not I back all these, these four is a different matter. But King Carney is at the top of that list. Um, well, Wellham, um, Good Birthday, of course, is on that list. And Illarab is on that list. Now... Good birthday, he's 33 to 1 shot. He's £8 lower when running well in this race last year. Um, he caught the eye again, again last time out. I don't think the ride was as bad as everybody made out uh, under Sylvester D'Souza, but Sylvester D'Souza, which is one concern, does not ride him today. He goes to Chelmsford to ride Shine So Bright. I think he was going to ride Premier Power, but Premier Power is now a long runner, so he goes to ride Shine So Bright, which is a which is a slight shame. He might defect and come back here. You don't know. Keep an eye out for that. It might be worth, might be worth noticing. But Martin Dwyer takes the ride anyway. There's nothing wrong with Martin Dwyer. He's a great jockey. Um, and this horse does go well here at Newby. Whether he wants soft ground or not, it's going to be... It's gonna, it, he's not going to want soft ground. It's going to be a concern if, if it goes really soft. So he probably won't go up. He's a sentimental bet. If he goes and wins at 33 to 1 or 40 to 1, whatever he's going to be on the day, I'm going to be absolutely kicking myself because I've been on him all year. I'm sure he's well handicapped. He's just being a nuisance to me at the minute. And this is a quick turnaround seven days later. So there's a few negatives with Good Birthday. I might have just talked myself out of him there. Um, Walhan doesn't have that much to find with an 11-2 favourite Tempus, um, Tempus uh, from Ascot last time. I think he's got more to come over this sort of trip. I think if it, this strongly run big field event is really going to suit him. Um, he is a 22-1 to one chance. I do like him unexposed for the yard. Just a four-year-old. Got a light weight on his back. Um, seven of the last ten winners of this race have carried eight stone something on their back. I do like to look at the bottom of the weights, and I do look to look for, for unexposed progressive horses in this field. So that's why well hands there. King Carney, like I say, again, doesn't have that much to find with Tempus um, from their Newbury run. Now, that was soft ground that day, or good soft virgin on soft ground that day, according to the clock. Uh, and it, it did so much on the front end, and then just took a little bit of a blow got caught and then ran on again. And I actually quite liked that run. That was his first run after a Gelden operation. So I think you can expect him to take a step forward from that. He's off a mark of 100. He's going to handle any rain that falls. He's actually two from two on soft ground. I think he's got a fantastic chance of reversing that form with Tempest. Tempest is 11 to two and he's 22 to one. And there is only three quarters of a length separating them and conditions I think, are going to be just as much as in King Carney's favour as they are going to be in for Tempus. And every man and their dog are currently on Tempus. I've seen tons and tons and tons of people tipping up Tempus. Just on that basis alone, you've got to look elsewhere, surely. Um, so King Carney, very interesting. And Illarab is the other one. He did really good fractions at Newbury in comparison to the listed race on the same card. Um, this horse has done some good fractions a few times now, and he's going the right way. He handles conditions. Uh, drop, he drops back from mile two to a mile one, slightly back in trip here. But I think that's going to suit him because I think he's slightly stretched by mile two. I think he could have a lot more to come over this sort of trip of one mile one. I don't think the, the um, course should be an issue. He ran here on debut. He's beaten eight lengths, but that was his debut run. You can forgive that. And, and watching him going down into the dip, he was okay. He was fine. He, he's got a short, sharp stride. I think there's lots to like about him. He's young, he's improving, he's a three-year-old. Just the type of horse that's been winning this race the last two years. So they're my four at the moment. Illarab, King Carney, Wallahan and Good Birthday. Might scrap Good Birthday. Wallahan may be gone. It might be King Carney and Illarab. Those might be my two, two against the field, but we will see. Right, over at Haydock, we've got to move quickly because we're running out of time. In the 205, I have got a bet in the 205 at Haydock, and the horse is called Danya. The head of the market, 3-1, to one, nothing fancy here. I just think this horse is well handicapped. If you go back and watch his run at Ripon last time, he was just caught in a pocket, couldn't get out. That form has been franked multiple times since, um, and it's not just that. If you go back through his form as well, he does look like a really well handicapped horse off a mark of 93. He is a three-year-old, so he does get his weight allowance of um, four pounds. 
Uh, and I do think he's the best horse in the race at this precise moment. So Danya, for me, is going to be the one in the 205. In the 240, um, we have a typical bookmaker race where a horse wins a race on soft ground last time out. It's good, good soft ground or good ground it was before they put the prices up this week. And Count Dorsey is in at favourite. Can't have Count Dorsey for me. He's a soft ground horse. He's a lovely horse. I don't think there's too much movement in those... Um, Top two in the market, Count Dorsey and Came From The Dark, who finished first and second last time out uh, in the same race at uh, Haydock over course and distance. I don't think there's too much movement in their marks, so I'm going to take them on. I'm going to take them on with Dark Shot and 9-1. to one. He's bounced back to form recently from the fitting of the blinkers. He's got movement in his handicap mark of 80. He looks a bit of cut in the ground. He doesn't mind that. He's £9 better off with Count Dorsey for a two-length defeat at Carrick last year. There's lots to like about him. He is the one who looks handicapped to go close in this race for me. So it'll be Dark Shot in the 240. The 310. Uh, I've not really got much of an opinion on this race as of yet. I need to get stuck into this, but I do believe I can find the winner of this race. So keep an eye out for the column on 310 um, at Haydock because I do want to get stuck in. It's a six fail on class three handicap. I do like that race. Uh, the cover of the 315 is the final race for us to cover today, and it is well worth taking on high definition in my opinion. I like Ace Aussie for Jessica Harrington, the horse that I mentioned earlier that Shane Foley's left to go and ride over at Newmarket. I like uh, Ace Aussie. I think he's definitely going to appreciate this step up to a mile. Um, it's a really interesting race. There's lots of form lines that interlink all of the runners, which is good. I like that. And Ace Aussie is the one I want to be on. High definition is mighty short, given how he ran last time out. He was impressive to some, but I thought he was very slow on the soft ground. But... Aussie ace for me in the 315. Right, I've got to wrap it up there because we're going on too long. Good luck tomorrow. Check out the GG column on the website tonight. Uh, and I'll see you again next week. Thank you very much for joining me.